I would like to speak to you from the subject, Will the Real Jesus Please Stand Up? Seems as if we have some volunteers. Don't think that this is sacrilege if you are just looking in for the first time, because we are a happy church. Let's say that we are a happy church. I would like to study with you some of the concepts as to who and what Jesus is all about. And I think that we're going to come to a better understanding of what Jesus is all about from this message at this time. From what I've read of Jesus in the gospel, we see that Jesus was a powerful personality. Nothing weak and sissified about this man, Jesus. Here is a man, for example, who sent a message to the king, or to the ruler of that particular region when he inquired as to who he was, you go and tell that fox. Does that sound like a sissy? Does that sound like a coward? Does that sound like a weakling? I say that Jesus was a man with a powerful personality. Jesus was a man of a towering personality. The Gospels tell us of the life of Jesus that he spoke with authority. Oh, I hope some artists are listening to me today and that they will paint some stronger type pictures of Jesus after this message. And some of you poets can write some stronger type poetry to portray Jesus after this message. We are told that when the officers came to arrest Jesus before the crucifixion, they came to find him with torches at night. And when they found him, when he had finished praying in the garden, the arresting mob asked him, who are you? Because we're looking for Jesus. And Jesus said these words to them, I am he. But there was power in his words, I am he. When, they, when Jesus said, I am he, those words had such power until the angry mob fell backwards. Let me give you a sort of a mystic secret, if you please, as to why the mob fell back when Jesus said, I am. Because you see, every time you say, I am, you are announcing the God presence within you. Some of you may not know that. Whenever you say, I am, you are announcing the God presence within you. I am is the self-definition of the Almighty. Write that down. I am is the self-definition of the Almighty. You are announcing God in you when you say, I am. You're announcing the presence of God in you. You're announcing the power of God in you. You're announcing the omnipotence of God in you when you say, I am. Shout it together with me here. I am. These words were so full of God power and God presence that when Jesus spoke these words, the mob fell backward. Now, does this sound like a weak need, coward type of man? These are not the words of a weakling. These are not the words of a scary cat, if you please. These are the words of a powerful, towering personality. 
On another occasion, when Jesus was speaking, some officers were sent to arrest him. And when they heard him speak, they couldn't touch him. And they returned to those who had sent them to arrest Jesus without him. And they said, well, why didn't you arrest Jesus? We sent you to get him. We sent you to bring him in. The officers replied, never a man spoke like this. Oh, you see, when you are aware of the presence and the power of God within you, even your words have power. See, Jesus was fully aware of who he was in God and who God is in him. But mind you, it's not enough for Jesus to know who he is in God and who God is in him. Every one of us must know who we are in God and who God is in us. And that gives us power. Now I'll give you an affirmation in the first person about this. It gives me power when I know who I am in God and who God is in me together. It gives me power when I know who I am in God and who God is in me. And right away, this is the secret of the power of Jesus. If there is a secret about it, Jesus knew who he was in God and who God was in him. And it's not enough for us to say, well, Jesus knew this, Jesus did this. We must come to know the same thing about ourselves that Jesus knew about himself so that we may use the same power. No, Jesus was not a weak-kneed, sissified type of man. He was a man of strong, magnetic, radiant, and loving personality. Jesus was called Master. But why was Jesus called Master? Jesus was called Master because he knew the master mind within him. And I'm here to announce to you that the same master mind that was in Jesus is within you. All you have to do is become conscious of it. And my fundamentalist friends who are thinking that perhaps we're claiming too much, may I remind you of the words of the, of the scripture, which say, let this same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Is that in the book, children? Yeah. Well, let's, let's affirm that verse of Scripture together. Come on. Let this same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus realized who he was in God and who God was in him. And whenever Jesus said, I and my Father are one, he spoke that truth for every man and all everything. Jesus said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And he demonstrated the presence of God within him by healing, blessing, and showing love to the whole world. So all of you who are ready for the realization and the demonstration of the presence of God already within you, stand up. For if you're ready to realize this and demonstrate it, then you are the real Jesus. You turn your hands now in the receptive position. And yes, we're going to take this moment the Christ realization, the God presence realization. I'm going to have you repeat this after me now. 
right here and right now. I accept the Christ presence in me.